When Russia began amassing troops on Ukraine's border in late 2021, many security experts predicted a similar buildup of Russian hackers along the ideological boundaries of cyberspace, ready to match any physical assault with an equally damaging virtual attack. The country has proven itself a leading offensive cyberpower, whether that be by interfering in and influencing foreign elections, or by mounting cyber attacks on critical infrastructure, such as air traffic control systems and water treatment facilities. Yet months into Moscow's brutal military invasion, a cyber war of similar consequence has yet to materialize. Essentially, Ukraine's digital defense has proved as determined as its physical one. Before the full-scale invasion of Ukraine, Russia was harassing Ukraine relentlessly in cyberspace. Still, the risks of cyber war have not gone away. As the world becomes increasingly reliant on technology across all walks of life, the potential for cyber warfare to wreak havoc on society remains, whether in this conflict or the next. So what exactly could a cyber war entail? And how prepared are we? For the first time in human history, it's possible to inflict large-scale harm on another country from a different country without anybody ever setting foot on the territory of that country. Cyber warfare can be broadly defined as an act of aggression conducted through a digital network by state-sponsored actors. The targets can be military or civilian, but the end goal is to coerce a sovereign state to bend to the actor's will. This is different from cyber terrorism, which is typically conducted by independent actors. It's now more than ever critical that we are preparing for such events. Security experts have been raising the alarm on such cyber risks for decades. Back in 2012, then US Defense Secretary Leon Panetta warned the country was facing a potential cyber Pearl Harbor, with the national power grid, transportation, financial network, and government having grown increasingly vulnerable to foreign hackers. Britain considered the risks so significant that in 2016, GCHQ, the country's electronic intelligence and security agency, launched a unit specifically designed to deal with cyber threats. Kieran Martin was the founding CEO of GCHQ's National Cybersecurity Centre and is now a professor at the University of Oxford's Blavatnik School of Government. He explained more. So there's this sort of Hollywood version of cyber, that everything was connected to everything else. That's not really the way cyber operations work, but they're really serious, quite pernicious and nasty social and economic threats from cyberspace. And we need to be realistic about telling people what they are. Such events are not unheard of. Already, there have been several serious cyber attacks with wide-reaching consequences, both intended and otherwise. In 2010, Iran's nuclear facilities were severely disrupted by a malicious computer worm known as Stutznet, in the first known example of a digital weapon causing physical damage. Then, in 2017, a mock ransomware attack known as NotPetya brought Ukrainian businesses to their knees, damaging systems and deleting data with major knock-on effects internationally. An accounting organization in Ukraine was attacked and Merce had to suffer a massive fallout as a consequence, even though they were not the target. So the challenge with the cyber realm is that you don't necessarily need to be the target, you can be collateral damage. And roughly one hour before Russia invaded Ukraine, internet access in Ukraine and swathes of Europe was crippled after a cyber attack against US satellite communications provider, Viasat. The outage affected the Ukrainian military's ability to communicate with its frontline troops, a move the West has blamed on Russia. In the first four months of 2022, Russian hackers launched more than 200 cyber attacks against Ukraine, targeting government agencies and private companies, according to analysis from Microsoft. The report noted that the cyber attacks have also sought to disrupt people's access to reliable information and critical life services on which civilians depend. However, the intensity of these attacks by Russia in the cyber realm have surprised experts who are anticipating more. Is it a lack of kind of ability from the Russian side or do you think it's just so fundamental to the fact that cyber war doesn't actually have the kind of overall impact that maybe traditional military warfare has? So there are various theories. Firstly, there was the quick victory theory. It is believed they thought if they were going to take the whole of Ukraine in three or four days, why would you devastate it digitally when you're going to be ruling it? Perhaps at the almost other end of the spectrum of theories, some of the Russian military equipment seems to have been so poor that Russian infantry themselves are 
using GPS, they're using WhatsApp to communicate. So if you take out the Ukrainian internet infrastructure, then Russian soldiers can't use it. There is, of course, then, and I think there is definitely something in this, that when you're in a period of high tension short of war, cyber is a very, very useful tool. When you're actually at war and you can send bomber planes in and so forth, then actually the complexity and time and resources of a cyber operation, it becomes less useful. That doesn't mean the risks of cyber conflict have faded, however. No special rules apply in cyber, so if Russia is going to do aggressive behaviour, it could do it in cyberspace. I think what is potentially even more uh, concerning is there is a lot of noisy activity in cyberspace at the moment between Russia and uh, Ukraine. But the way the network world works means you cannot cauterize that activity necessarily between Russia and Ukraine. Physical attacks, just by nature, can be contained a bit. You know, you know where you're attacking, you can control it to a certain degree. Unfortunately, that's not the case when it comes to cyber attacks. As a result, authorities are now calling for greater efforts to help prevent or at least prepare for potential cyber attacks. That includes encouraging governments and businesses to work more closely together to understand their cybersecurity vulnerabilities. One part of it is uh, ensuring the resilience of government establishments. I think the other and more important priority also is to ensure how are they supporting the private sector in this endeavor. Public-private cooperation is the key to all of this. In response to rising Russian cyber risks, the US passed a new law in March 2022, requiring owners and operators of critical infrastructure to report cyber incidents within 72 hours and ransomware payments within 24 hours. A year earlier, Russia-based cybercriminals targeted the US's largest fuel pipeline. The Colonial Pipeline ransomware attack resulted in widespread energy shortages and a regional state of emergency. President Joe Biden said in a statement, Russia could conduct malicious cyber activity against the United States, including as a response to the unprecedented economic costs we've imposed. At the same time, authorities are trying to determine the legal boundaries of cyberspace. In 2021, President Biden gave President Putin a list of 16 critical sectors he said should be off limits to cyber attacks. Those included telecommunications, food, energy, and healthcare. It follows continued calls from Western policymakers to establish some form of global cyber treaty, outlining the red lines of cyber warfare. Similar to the Geneva Convention, it could, for example, draw virtual no-fly zones around hospitals, making any life-threatening attack on medical facilities a war crime. The jury is out on how much buy-in such an agreement would get in a world currently so at odds. I'd be cautious about thinking there's some grand treaty coming that's going to take care of this problem. In actual fact, what I think seems more likely at the moment is that thanks to the rise of China and its technological base, the technological world is splitting into two technospheres, one led by the United States and its allies, one led by China. And if that trend continues as it looks likely to, I think what you might find is a set of sort of rules and standards in the, in the US-led model and a different set of standards in the China model and then a bunch of competition for influence afterwards. Still. There are some limitations to cyberspace, which experts say offer hope that a cyber conflict, if it were to occur, might not be as catastrophic as once feared. We do have to understand this problem. It is about computer code. There's serious harm you can do with it, but it's pretty hard actually to blow up the world via computer code. There are technical limitations, there are scientific limitations on what can be done. We have a chance to improve the security of technology. We can see what's coming. We have that discussion, we can get ahead of it. So we could have a safer digital environment in 10 years time than we have now. Thank you.